Child labor started around the 1800s when families immigrated from different countries to the United States. It was a cheap way for fast production. Many kids had to give up their proper education to earn money for what was needed. There are many disagreements on whether or not child labor was constitutional. In 1880, 32.5% of all boys and 12.2% of all girls in the United States, ages 10 to 15, were participating in child labor. In 1990, 26.1% of all boys and 37.3% of all girls were involved. In 1930, only 6.4% of all boys and 2.9% of all girls were working. The numbers decreased because laws concerning child labor were established. saying that children under the age of 14 couldn't work at night. Also, their workday was limited to 12 hours. In 1813, working children must have schooling. In 1842, Massachusetts limits children's workdays to 10 hours. In 1876, Working Men's Party proposes ending employment of children under the age of 14. In 1881, American Federation of Labor passes a resolution on states to ban children under the age of 14 from all gainful employment. In 1883, New York City stopped production of cigars in tenements where thousands of children worked. In 1916, the federal government outlaws transferring of goods across state lines if minimum age laws are violated. In 1924, Congress passed an amendment granting the federal government authority to regulate labor. In 1936, U.S. government would not purchase goods made by underage children. In 1938, minimum ages of employment and hours of work for children are regulated by federal law. In 1938, Congress passed the Fair Labor Standard Act, stating that minimum ages were 16 for working during school hours and 14 for certain jobs after the school and 18 for dangerous work. <laughs> policies of protecting unionization and bureaucratization against children in the poorest neighborhoods, crippling them by putting them in schools that fail, has done more to create income inequality in the United States than any other single policy. It is tragic what we do in the poorest neighborhoods in trapping children in, first of all, in child laws, which are truly stupid. Okay, you say to somebody, you shouldn't go to work before you're what, 14, 16 years of age, fine. You're totally poor. A 
Although there are many child labor laws in the U.S. today, there are many other countries still suffering. This includes the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, the Congo, Uganda, El Salvador, Ecuador, and Guatemala. It is estimated there are about 250 million economically active children who are below 18 years old worldwide. In Asia, some of the jobs children handle include working in farming and fishing industries, mining, construction, drug trade, and some work in brick kilns. Although the child laborers are in other countries, some of the companies they work for are American, such as the Apple Company. Apple had some serious problems with child labor work conditions where their iPhones and other materials or, uh, uh, items were produced. It wasn't clear that they weren't using conflict minerals mined by African children's own hands in some of the products that people love and buy in the United States. So we, we have to be honest that for all of the great things Steve Jobs came up with idea-wise, he was still involved with a company that was literally built on the back of Chinese workers, many of them children, many of them enduring these incredibly long shifts.